Before we start our topic today, please smash the like button and subscribe to help the channel grow. And thanks for your support. Genome editing technologies enable scientists to make changes to DNA, leading to changes in physical traits like eye color and disease risk. Scientists use different technologies to do this. These technologies act like scissors, cutting the DNA at a specific spot. Then scientists can remove, add, or replace the DNA where it was cut. The first genome editing technologies were developed in the late 1900s. More recently, a new genome editing tool called CRISPR, invented in 2009, has made it easier than ever to edit DNA. CRISPR is simpler, faster, cheaper, and more accurate than older genome editing methods. Many scientists who perform genome editing now use CRISPR. One way that scientists use genome editing is to investigate different diseases that affect humans. They edit the genomes of animals, like mice and zebrafish, because animals have many of the same genes as humans. For example, mice and humans share about 85% of their genes. By changing a single gene or multiple genes in a mouse, scientists can observe how these changes affect the mouse's health and predict how similar changes in human genomes might affect human health. Scientists at the National Human Genome Research Institute NHGRI, are doing just this. The Burgess Lab, for example, is studying zebrafish genomes. Scientists in this lab delete different genes in zebrafish one at a time using CRISPR to see how the deletion impacts the fish. The Burgess Lab focuses on 50 zebrafish genes which are similar to the genes that cause human deafness so that they can better understand the genomic basis of deafness. Scientists are developing gene therapies treatments involving genome editing to prevent and treat diseases in humans. Genome editing tools have the potential to help treat diseases with a genomic basis, like cystic fibrosis and diabetes. There are two different categories of gene therapies, germline therapy and somatic therapy. Germline therapies change DNA in reproductive cells, like sperm and eggs. Changes to the DNA of reproductive cells are passed down from generation to generation. Somatic therapies, on the other hand, target non-reproductive cells, and changes made in these cells affect only the person who receives the gene therapy. In 2015, scientists successfully used somatic gene therapy when a one-year-old in the United Kingdom named Layla received a gene editing treatment to help her fight leukemia, a type of cancer. These scientists did not use CRISPR to treat Layla, and instead used another genome editing technology called Talons. Doctors tried many treatments before this, but none of them seemed to work, so scientists received special permission to treat Layla using gene therapy. This therapy saved Layla's life. However, treatments like the one that Layla received are still experimental, because the scientific community and policymakers still have to address technical barriers and ethical concerns surrounding genome editing. Technical Barriers Even though CRISPR improved upon older genome editing technologies, it is not perfect. For example, sometimes genome e editing tools cut in the wrong spot. Scientists are not yet sure how these errors might affect patients. Assessing the safety of gene therapies and improving upon genome editing technologies are critical steps to ensure that this technology is ready for use in patients. Ethical Concerns Scientists and all of us should carefully consider the many ethical concerns that can emerge with genome editing, including safety. First and foremost, genome editing must be safe before it is used to treat patients. Some other ethical questions that scientists and society must consider are 1. Is it okay to use gene therapy on an embryo when it is impossible to get permission from the embryo for treatment? Is getting permission from the parents enough? 2. What if gene therapies are too expensive and only wealthy people can access and afford them? That could worsen existing health inequalities between the rich and poor. 3. Will some people use genome editing for traits not important for health, such as athletic ability or height? Is that okay? 4. Should scientists ever be able to edit germline cells? Edits in the germline would be passed down through generations. 
Most people agree that scientists should not edit the genomes of germline cells at this time because the safety and scientific communities across the world are approaching germline therapy research with caution because edits to a germline cell would be passed down through generations. Many countries and organizations have strict regulations to prevent germline editing for this reason. The NIH, for example, does not fund research to edit human embryos. A Chinese scientist who shocked the medical community last year when he said he had illegally created the world's first gene-edited babies has been sentenced to three years in prison by a court in southern China. He Jianquei announced in November 2018 that he had used a powerful technique called CRISPR on a human embryo to edit the genes of twin girls. He said he modified a gene with the intention of protecting the girls against HIV, the virus th that causes AIDS. Many scientists expressed concerns about possible unintended side effects of the genetic changes that could be passed down to future generations. Last fall, he also indicated there might be another pregnancy involving a gene-edited embryo. The court indicated that three genetically edited babies have been born. The closed court in Shenzhen found he and two colleagues guilty of illegal medical practice by knowingly violating the country's regulations and ethical principles with their experiments, Xinhua News Agency reported. It also ordered he to pay a fine of about $430,000. He has defended his controversial work by saying that it will help families. I understand my work will be controversial, he said, as NPR's Rob Stein reported. But I believe families need this technology and I am willing to take the criticism for them. At the time, scientists had previously genetically modified human embryos, but none had publicly claimed to have implanted embryos in a woman's womb in an experiment that resulted in human babies. Chinese police detained he in January and, as the Post reported, an initial investigation concluded that he organized a project team that included foreign staff, which intentionally avoided surveillance and used technology of uncertain safety and effectiveness to perform human embryo gene editing activity with the purpose of reproduction, which is officially banned in the country. The gene that he edited, CCR5, is known as a pathway for HIV to infect immune system cells. But as Stein notes, research carried out since his stunning announcement has suggested that the genetic changes he made could cause more harm than good to the baby's health. A study in Nature Medicine analyzed the DNA of more than 400,000 people and found that the changes that he made could make people more vulnerable to viruses such as West Nile and influenza. This is a lesson in humility, George Daly, the dean of the Harvard Medical School, told Stein. Even when we think we know something about a gene, we can always be surprised and even startled, like in this case, to find out that a gene we thought was protective may actually be a problem. Marcy Darnowski, the executive director of the Center for Genetics and Society, said in an email to NPR that his reckless and self-serving acts should highlight the broader and deeper risks and the pointlessness of any proposal to use gene editing in human reproduction. William Hurlbut, a scientist and bioethicist at Stanford, who had attempted to persuade he, who is nicknamed JK, not to do the experiment, called his arrest a sad story. Everyone lost in this, JK, his family, his colleagues, and his country, but the one gain is that the world is awakened to the seriousness of our advancing genetic technologies," Hurlbut said in an emailed statement. I feel sorry for JK's little family though I warned him things could end this way, but it was just too late. Thank you for watching see you again for another interesting facts and amazing stories and also please like and subscribe.